Hello and welcome to the Global Fashion Workshop channel. I remind you that we release a new video three times a week. Today we're going to draft a pattern of a simple jacket. It consists of two parts, the back and the front, because the sleeve, the collar, and the front are all in one piece. Let's take a look at the sketch. So take a look here. This is the sketch. There's no pocket yet because I haven't decided what kind of pocket I want to make. Once the jacket is cut, I'll decide. But you can choose any pocket you like. For example, a patch pocket or a classic. That's why there's no pocket right now. This is the shawl collar and front in one. I'm in love with the shawl collar. That's why I decided to draft the shawl collar in the front in a one piece with the dolman sleeve. We'll start with this jacket and later we can use this pattern with the sleeve and the front in one piece for cardigans and coats, etc. It will help us a lot. Of course, we all know how to set in a one piece or a two piece sleeve or a raglan sleeve, but we also have lots of beginners here and this video will be very useful for beginners. If you're a beginner or you would like to try sewing and don't know what to start with, this jacket is a great starting point. We've drafted a lot of garments without patterns. Someone might say it's no longer interesting, but when you look at the finished garment, you'll realize that the simplest drafting can achieve a very good result. I would like to say, let's look at the sketch. There is a seam at the center back. That's it. We need to make the front block and the back block. I think we'll add a hemming allowance here and reinforce it with a fusible interfacing. Next, I think this jacket will be done without a lining. I think we'll need a facing and that's it. Like this, without a lining. You can make this jacket with a lining. We have a lot of videos available on our channel. How to sew a garment with the lining how to make a facing, how to cut the lining for dolman sleeve garments, and how to attach it all together. You can find them all on our channel. You can find a series of videos on how to make a cashmere jacket without a pattern. It's all available on our channel for free. Use this information to your advantage. Please look up these videos. I made that jacket myself. I've talked way too much. Look at our measurements. Bust circumference is 116, half of it is 58, and one-fourth is 29 centimeters. We don't need a waist circumference. Hip circumference is 112, half of it is 61, and one-quarter is 28 centimeters. The back width is 42 centimeters. We all know how we measure the back width for a garment without a pattern, and half of it is 21. We don't take measurement from the left side seam to the right side seam. We measure it like that, on top of the shoulders. Along the top part of the shoulders, my measurement is 41. So my back width is 41 centimeters. The back length is 41 centimeters, basically a quarter of the height. The length of the garment is 65 centimeters along the back. I asked to measure it from here to my desired length. My measure is 65. The sleeve length is 50 centimeters and it will be a little shortened. As I said earlier, we'll be adding to the hem allowance to the sleeve. But then I thought about it. I talk first, then think. Here is a bias thread on our sleeve. That's why we need to use a facing to finish this edge. And the facing must be cut along the lengthwise or the crosswise grain because the cut edge is along the bias grain. It'll be unclear into which direction from the grain line will fold so it won't work. That's why we'll cut the sleeve the necessary length and add the facing. We can cut the facing along the lengthwise or crosswise grain, and once we fold it, we won't end up with any diagonal pulls. It's time to make a pattern, because we need to complete it today. The fabric I chose is great. It won't wear out. This fabric will last a long time. If I'm not mistaken, it contains 8% wool. The addition of wool makes this fabric so exclusive. Here is this fabric in beige and in turquoise colors. Look, it's gorgeous. I'll use this color for the jacket. By the way, look how beautiful it is. Someone might make an outfit like this. I was looking at this combo. I like this lace. It's gorgeous. I really like it. But I will put it away for now. I'll use this fabric for cutting today. 
But before we start cutting, we need to draft a pattern. You can draft right on the fabric, but we won't do it today. Let's make a paper pattern. Why? I can explain. Maybe you'll decide to make a different garment based on this pattern, and then you'll have to redraw it every time if you don't have a paper pattern. But if you have one, if you have a ready-to-go pattern in your file, then you can make a new garment. You just need to take out the pattern, lay it out on the fabric of your choice, and you're ready to cut. It takes 10 minutes, and in 10 minutes, you're ready to stitch your new outfit. So we're making a paper pattern today. As always, I start from the back block. We begin by drawing a straight line. The length of the garment is 65 centimeters. Always mark a point on the paper. This is the base of the neck and measure 65 centimeters down along the line. Let's take 67 centimeters and then three for hemming. It's 70 centimeters in total. This line is 70 centimeters long. I mark the back length along this line. The back length is 41 centimeters. From point zero, I'll call it point zero. The 41 centimeters down is the back length. I draw a waistline here and divide 41 centimeters in a half. This is my back measurement. I divide it and get 20 and a half centimeters. I draw a horizontal line from the following points, zero, 20 and a half, and 41, and a bottom line. The first line is short, I will draw a neckline for the back here, like so, the half of the back length. This is the bust line, but it's not related to the level of the bust points. This is just our working line. And the bottom line. and three centimeters. I add three centimeters for the hem allowance. So, pay attention please. I'm going to mark the hip measurement along the bottom line. You can draw a hip line about 17 centimeters below the waistline. This is a loosely fitted garment, and we have the neckline of the back, the half to the waistline, the waistline, the hip line, and the bottom line with the hem allowance. So let's begin. Let's draw a back width line. Half of the back width is 21 centimeters. I measure 21 centimeters from the center back line along the bust line. Next, I draw a vertical line from this point. I would like to mention that we have the 30% discount for course bundles now. Take a look at this offer. Purchase our courses and get the valuable knowledge. In our courses, we show you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a garment. I hope you will find this offer very interesting. You can purchase our courses with a discount right now. Let's continue. From point zero, I measure to the side. Let's work with the neckline of the back. If I measure seven centimeters, then for my size, it would be right into my neck here. That's why I measure eight centimeters. So eight centimeters here, let's add a couple of more millimeters, 8.3 centimeters. I mark three centimeters up so I can draw the neckline of the back. My neckline is not going to start at the base of the neck. It will be slightly opened. This will be the jacket. In your case, it might be a cardigan. You might want to wear a scarf or wear a sweater with a turtleneck. So it will be more comfortable if you leave the neckline slightly open. No, I take eight and a half centimeters and draw the neckline of the back. Draw a curved line here. Let's mark the width here. The bust. In my case, the wearing ease will be two centimeters. And we'll be using values in brackets. It's a quarter of the circumferences. 
I will add two centimeters wearing ease to each quarter of the measurement. In total, I'll have eight centimeters of wearing ease in the circumference. If it's too much for you, make it smaller. If it's not enough, make it bigger. You can add whatever ease you would like. The bust is 29 plus two. It's 31 centimeters. A quarter of the hips is 28 plus two. It's 30 centimeters. Draw the side seam line and let's work with the center back line. Take a look here. At this section, we draw a straight line and towards the waistline, we make slight fit adjustment. Fit adjustment must be done within reason. If we have a waistline like this, it doesn't mean we can draw a line like this. No, it wouldn't be pretty. When I make this type of garment, people often tell me it doesn't fit. If you're in doubt about this fit, I always say, go shopping, try on ready-to-wear garments. Even if you're not planning to buy anything, find some time and go to the mall for a couple of hours. Go to different boutiques and try on different clothes. Try on oversized, loose fit or slim fit garments to see and feel how it looks on you. Try on different clothes. You can't just think, oh, it must be bad or it doesn't suit me. It is hard to know what is bad or what is good if you don't have anything to compare with. That's why it's important to take the time and try on different garments. It's necessary. I draw the line and I can see now it can be changed a little. But don't make it too curved and along the center back about one centimeter here. Look at the point of intersection. This is the back neckline and the back width line, and this is the point of intersection. I measure one centimeter down and mark it, point one. This is point one. Connect the neckline point at the shoulder level with point one. This is a shoulder line. I measure 50 centimeters from the back width line. This is the length of the sleeve. Now take a square tool and draw a right angle from the point. And that's how our sleeve could look. This is the beginning of the sleeve, but I would like to change a slope here about three centimeters. That's exactly the same that we did when we were making a shirt. In the shirt, we changed the slope by four centimeters. In this case, we're changing the slope by three centimeters since we have long sleeves here. We're changing the direction of the sleeve by lowering the point at the end of the sleeve by three centimeters. And this is our new line, not this one. I draw a right angle to this line. Do you see the direction of it? I'm doing all this so you can see the difference. Like so. What I would like to say, we need to decide on the width of the sleeve at the bottom. I want to make it wider. It is the dolman sleeve, and if it's too narrow, I want it to be 32 centimeters. Stand in front of the mirror, look and decide what you want. Half of the 32 is 16 centimeters. Here is a right angle. I measure 16 centimeters and draw a right angle again. Look, what a lovely sleeve we have. Now, here we have the distance to the waistline. Here is half or the working bust line and the waistline. I start drafting the sleeve from the halfway between the waistline and the bust line. I draw it like this. You can draw it here, any line you like. Look what a lovely sleeve we have. 
Leave your comments if this topic is interesting to you. We might make another dolmen sleeve with a gusset. That's it. The pattern is almost ready. I take a ruler. Here's the bottom line with the hem allowance. I've used so much graph paper in my life. Okay, I've drafted a back block. I need to draft a front block. I will draft a front and a collar in one piece. I will be waiting for your comments on this topic. There's a little secret about the shawl collar. I'll make another video about it, how to get a neckline that doesn't look straight. Leave your comments if that interests you. I'll draw a waistline and annotate here. The waistline, a center back, and the seaming. I'm going to cut it out. I hope it's clear. We can draft the front part of our jacket. Pay attention here. I did nothing but trace the back block. I just traced it and that's it. Nothing special here. But I wrote here a center front, not the center back. And I'm ready to add some changes. First of all, I raise the beginning of the shoulder. I raise it up two centimeters. I tried to raise it by two and a half centimeters in the past, but it doesn't work for me. In my case, it needs to be two centimeters. Don't overcomplicate it. This is a loose fitted jacket. There's no specific spot for the shoulder seam. I raise it by two centimeters. This is a common mistake. You raised the beginning of the shoulder and you draw the sleeve line parallel to the original line. But we only need to raise the beginning of the shoulder by two centimeters. Two centimeters here. I start to raise this line toward this point. This highest point needs to be connected with the sleeve smoothly. The shoulder seam is slightly elevated on the front block and it will go to this line. I raised only this section, so I raised the beginning of the shoulder by 2 centimeters. Now I draw a line from this high point perpendicular to the center front. I made the center front line longer and will draw a perpendicular line. Because of the graph paper, I don't need to use a square tool. Find the intersections of these points, the center front and the highest point of the shoulder. Here they are. I measure 9 centimeters down. Why do I measure 9 centimeters? because I'm making a loose neckline. You can take eight centimeters. It won't make any difference. I take nine centimeters and draw a neckline. I won't use it. We won't make a neckline here, but we need to know our starting points. That's why we work from this point. I need to decide on the location of the first button. What should I do? I stand in front of a mirror, look at myself, put the beginning of the measuring tape here to the base of the neck, from the sternal notch, and imagine where the first button will be. I don't want the first button to be here. The collar will be very small. I want to have a nice collar. So I've got 31 centimeters from the base of the neck. This is the level of the first button. 
I measure 31 centimeters down from the base of the neck. This is the level of the first button. Here it is, right here. Now I need to add a button stand to the center front for closure. In simple terms, I need to add a space for buttons. I add two and a half centimeters to the center front. Two and a half centimeters, it is the seam allowance. I won't add anything else here. So here is the level of the first button. Look here. I should measure the neckline of the back. Here it is. This is the back line, and here is the neckline of the back block where the collar will be sewn. I should measure this distance. Measure exactly along the line. It's nine and a half centimeters. I write down nine and a half centimeters. Take the square tool. Draw a line square to the first section of the shoulder line. Here is the right angle. I measure nine and a half centimeters from the highest point of the shoulder. I add one more centimeter, just in case, and draw a right angle here again. I measure eight centimeters along that line. This distance is equal to eight. This is the collar width along the center back. You can take eight, eight and a half, or seven and a half centimeters. So we know where the collar begins and the level of the first button. Those two points should connect with each other. What's next? Let's do it by the book. I measure one and a half centimeters from the shoulder towards the center front. Sometimes we measure two centimeters. In this case, I measure one and a half. Here it is. I draw the roll line, starting at the level of the first button to this point. Let's use a bright color here. This is the fold line. The fold line starts from the level of the first button at the edge of the button stand and does not reach the beginning of the shoulder by one and a half to two centimeters. In my case, it's one and a half centimeters. This is the fold line. Now let's imagine what kind of collar we would make here from the fold line. For example, mine would look like this. We imagined the collar, and you can erase and change this line if you don't like it. Draw another one, erase it, and draw once again until you find the line that you like. I like this one. Six and a half centimeters. I put a few marks from the fold line to this line. Five and a half centimeters, more or less. I mark a few points. Now connect the end of the collar through our marks here. Let's use a pencil. Maybe I'll need to correct it. It's so beautiful. You don't need to go exactly through these points. You have to draw a beautiful line and a nice looking collar. This is the beginning of the shoulder. Here is the beginning of the collar in a one piece with the front. It's eight centimeters wide along the center back. Well, you can actually take eight and a half centimeters, but I don't like to have a lot of fabric in the back of my neck. I'm drawing the button stand and it includes the seam allowance. This line is also with a seam allowance. We've done it properly. We worked very hard. If you draft it without explanations, it takes 15 minutes. I would call it drafting a jacket in 15 minutes. 
Please leave your comment on how long it took you to construct this pattern. I want to change this line a little. So, our collar is ready. This is the fold line. Everything makes sense here. What changes have we made to the back? We've raised the beginning of the shoulder, added the button stand, and drafted the collar. That's it. Our pattern is ready. I think if you make this pattern once, then you will use it again and again, because it's very comfortable, and this sleeve feels great. I just tried on a linen shirt, and really, I was very happy. It's time to say goodbye. Be your own kind of beautiful. Don't be afraid to start sewing if you've never done it before. Take your time. Watch our tutorials and follow the instructions. And when you make your first garments, you'll understand the difference between the garment that you've made yourself and the garment that was bought. You will feel that clothes also have their own mood and energy, and you will see how proud and happy you will be wearing the clothes you've made. It's time to say goodbye. Click the like button and share our videos in social media and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. All the best from Irina Paukste and the rest of our team.